Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my 2014 favorites and there's a lot of them so let's get started right away. The first thing I want to talk about is the Tarte Amazonian Clay Airbrush Foundation. Now I picked this up sometime I believe in the winter uh, or last winter that is and I really loved it right away just because it's a really light foundation. It is a mineral powder so the coverage isn't going to be too much. I love that because it's not heavy it just it makes your skin look flawless as well as maintaining basically the feel of your regular skin anyway. Now at times I do want to go for more of a liquid foundation and this year I finally decided to try one. In previous years I had been using a tinted moisturizer or a BB cream which is okay but this year I had discovered the Chanel Perfection Lumiere Velvet Foundation and I love it. Now it is a little bit on the darker side for me now that it's becoming winter. I think I mentioned this in my last video but I wear 40 beige and this was basically my perfect summer color. Now that it's winter my skin is getting a little bit lighter so I'm definitely going to be switching back to the Tarte but I, I love this foundation it's mattifying it's not drying at all and again it still keeps the feel of your skin feeling really natural and soft so this is definitely a good pick even though it's a higher end um, product I definitely recommend it to everyone the next product I've been loving this year has been the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer and I love this because it is super smoothing and it's very lightweight, makes everything just nice and flawless I guess for the application of makeup. So like I've mentioned this is a little bit of a splurge. It retails for about I believe $70 or so at Sephora. I think it's worth every penny. So Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer, definitely what I've been using every single day since I got it. Moving on to concealers. Now, I've been using the Bobbi Brown Corrector for over a year now, and I wear it in the shade Light Peach, and I really love using this underneath my eyes, just because it has a bit of that salmon tone, and therefore it neutralizes any darkness underneath the eyes. After I apply the Bobbi Brown Corrector, I follow up with the Bourjois Healthy Mix Concealer in Medium Radiance. So I've been alternating between the Bourjois and the NARS Concealer, and I do prefer the Bourjois on me, just because it just layers really well with the Bobbi Brown Corrector, and it still feels really smooth and not too cakey or heavy underneath the eyes and I think because there's a little bit of more of a yellow undertone in this then it definitely goes a lot better with my skin. It says it's a radiance and anti-fatigue concealer and I basically use this underneath the eyes and then anywhere else that there's redness on my face. Um, yeah, it's definitely a good little concealer. You can find Bourjois here in Canada at Shoppers Drug Mart so definitely check this one out if you're looking for a new concealer that is really lightweight but provides really great coverage. The next product I've been loving this year, and this is one that should come as no surprise, and it is the Lorac Pro Palette. Now, in previous years I've mentioned the Urban Decay Naked Palette as being my favorite, but Lorac has just stolen my heart in terms of eyeshadow palettes. It's extremely versatile. There's 16 colors, there's matte and shimmer shades, and it's just the perfect all-around palette this year. So this year I've transitioned out of using felt tip liquid liners and went for a brush tip liquid liner and that's the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner in Trooper. Now I use this every single day because I do like to do the winged liner every single day because it basically makes me look more awake. But I love it because it's super precise and so you can create really thick or thin lines with this and it's just become my favorite. Like I will not go back to any felt tip liner anytime soon. I love the precision. I love the I love the color. I love that it's not super glossy in terms of a liquid liner and it's just it's just it's a great little product. My favorite pencil liner for the year has been the Smashbox Always Sharp Waterproof Cold Liner. And this is the one with the self-sharpening lid and so in that sense it makes it really really convenient. If you want a more affordable alternative to the Smashbox pencils, you can go for the drugstore brand Annabelle because they recently came out with their Stay Sharp liners and they are basically exactly the same except instead of being, you know, in the $20 range, they're only $7 and they work just as well. They're also ophthalmologist tested so they won't irritate your eyes and you really can't go wrong. So, although I love the Smashbox pencils, the Annabelle ones are a great drugstore dupe. I actually did a blog post comparing the two not too long ago, so I'll leave that link down below so you can go check that out. 
So the next thing I'm mentioning is the Lancome Hypnostrama Waterproof Mascara. Now you have to order this online here in Canada through the Sephora site because they don't sell the waterproof one in stores. Now I love this because I have really stubborn Asian lashes and my lashes will point straight down. So of course I have to curl them first but then I use about one or two coats of the Hypnostrama Waterproof and it just keeps my lashes up all day and it doesn't smudge and it just gives the perfect amount of volume. The next thing I'm going to mention is the Clay de Poe Eyebrow Pencil and this was, I've been using this for almost two years now. This was originally a recommendation from Ray of the RayViewer.com or RayView on YouTube. Now, Clay de Poe is one of the only brands that carries a gray black color which is really great if you have naturally black or dark hair and you find that sometimes that the brown tones in most other eyebrow pencils um, just runs a little bit too warm on you, which is the case for me. Um, I used to use the Dior Universal Brow Styler because the lady at the counter said that it was universal and that it would look really good on everyone. However, when I looked at pictures from when I was using it, it looked really, really brown. And I just, I, I maybe other people didn't notice it, but I definitely did. I just wasn't happy with it. So when I heard about this or saw this on Ray, I thought that this was perfect. And I was able to find it at Holt Renfrew. Now, in the past, they were only a available at the Bloor location, but now they've expanded, so Clay de Poe is now available at the Yorkdale store as well as Sherway, so it's definitely a little bit more easily accessible. Keep in mind though, 204 is extremely popular because it's one of the only ones available on the market, so if you have black hair like I do and you want a more natural looking brow pencil, then go pick up the 204 as soon as you can. The first time you buy it, it might be a little bit of a shock to your wallet just because you have to buy the holder as well as the cartridge separately, but then after that you just have to buy the refilled cartridges which run you about $28, which is pretty standard for an eyebrow pencil. Moving on to bronzers and highlights. Now, I love highlighters. They're my favorite thing to buy. I think other than lipstick, but we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But the one highlighter I've been using all year and loving is, of course, the Bombs Mary Luminizer. Now, this is available at Rexall as well as online at nailpolishcanada.com and it's just a really really shimmery highlighter so if you're heavy-handed then definitely be careful or else you'll end up looking like a glitter bomb unless that's the look that you're going for in which no judgment that's do you boo boo but it's just great it's a really good highlighter it's super shimmery when the sun hits you when the light hits you you just look radiant so definitely a really really good pick the bronzer I've been using for most of the year has been the Tarte Amazonian Clay Waterproof Matte Bronzer. Now this is the same one that I purchased maybe about a year and a half to almost two years ago and as you can see it's definitely hit pan and it just won't die yet. So I already have a backup of this ready to go but this just keeps going so I'll keep using it until it's gone. Now moving on to blushes. I couldn't pick just one because I do love blushes as well. I basically love all makeup, so I don't know where I'm going with the whole, I love this, I love this, I, I love it all. And the first one I want to talk about is another Tarte product, and this is the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Blush, and this is in Natural Beauty. And this is the one that I wanted to show in my top 5 mid-range, but I picked up another one instead. But it's just a beautiful red-based color, and it just provides a really really natural looking sort of flush, kind of like you just came in from shoveling the snow if you're in somewhere, or if you're somewhere that snows. But, you know, as you can see, I've used this a bunch, but you can still see the embossed design on it. Really don't need a lot of this product because it's so pigmented. It'll show up on your face really, really easily, so you won't go through it um, for a really, really long time. The next two blushes I'm going to talk about are sort of similar to each other, and I think that's why I like them. However, one is a little bit more shimmery, and the other one is matte. And it's the MAC Mineralized Blush in Warm Soul, and then also the Laura Geller Sugar-Free Baked Blush in Boysenberry. Now, they're both baked formulas, and they sort of run, you know, Warm Soul looks a little bit warmer, as the name would imply, and Boysenberry looks a bit more pink, but both of them are actually really similar in the sense that they both look extremely natural in terms of that natural, like, pink sort of flush as opposed to a red sort of flush. But like I said, MAC is a bit more shimmery and the Laura Geller is matte, so depending on what kind of look I want to go for, these basically achieve the same effect. This one is a little bit, I would say, more 
peachy pink and this one maybe is a little bit like rosier pink but they both achieve the same effect. I'm just repeating myself now so so definitely these two are my two other blush picks of the year. Now moving on to lipsticks. It was extremely hard for me to narrow down which lipsticks I've really loved this year but most of them have been red. So any type of red lipstick I've generally loved. Anytime that I went to an event, I always wore the same one. Now I hate mentioning limited edition products just because you can't really get them now and it's unfair, but just for the sake of the video, the one lipstick that I've been wearing a lot to events this year has been the Dior Diorific lipstick in Diorling. That's a lot of variations of Dior. But this came out, I believe, holiday 2013, and it comes in sort of this vintage gold packaging. Now, they re-released two different colors this year for their holiday gold shock collection with the duo color lipsticks, but this is not the case. So Diorling is a deep red color with a sort of a blue tone or a blue base to it. And it was the one that they used in the holiday 2013 ad campaign, and it's just the perfect deep classic red. But like I said, it's not available, so sorry I had to show that. I'm sure you can find lots of variations and your perfect red. But another red that I actually recently picked up is the one I'm wearing, which is Max Russian Red, and I've, I've been enjoying it so far, so don't be surprised if it's in my 2015 favorites. But yeah, any type of red lipstick I've generally been loving this year, so I'll probably do a blog post about that some other time. My favorite nude lipstick has been the Shu Amora Rouge Unlimited Supreme Matte Lipstick, and this is in the shade MBG942. It's basically your standard nude lipstick with a little bit of a pink lean to it, but it's not too bad. I actually usually wear this with a gloss over top anyway, so to keep it more nude but with a little bit more of a peach lean. Usually matte lipsticks are drying, and I find that this is not the case with this. So if you're looking for a nice matte lipstick, then definitely give the Shu Amora ones a try, because I feel as though Shu Amora is a little bit bit underrated in terms of makeup. I know they're known for their lashes and their cleansing oils, but their lip products are actually quite nice, so definitely give them a go the next time you're out and about. So I don't really do much in terms of hair care, but the one thing that I use every single time I wash my hair, or after I wash my hair, is the Orbe Royal Blowout Styling Spray. Now this is great if you blow dry your hair because it helps shorten your drying time as well as acts as a heat protectant, makes your hair shiny, and so on and so on. But this actually works really well even if you air dry your hair because your hair will always just fall. I don't know, I think it just falls correctly. I generally let my hair air dry most of the time. I very rarely blow dry just because I don't have the time or I, I just don't care. But this will make my hair look like I've actually blown it out. So Royal Blow It is a little bit on the pricier side in terms of a hair product. It is, I believe, around $50 Canadian, but it works like magic. So this is already my second bottle, and I love it. So if you're looking for a new hair care product, and you don't really do too much to your hair, but you want to, I don't know, bring a little bit more pizzazz or life to it, then definitely give this one a go. The last thing I'm going to talk about is a perfume, and if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I'm not really a huge perfume person, but the one fragrance that I've been wearing consistently over the, I would say the last half of the year to be fair, is the Calvin Klein Reveal Perfume. To be fair, I did receive this in my goodie bag after the reveal launch, so no I did not pay for this. However, I'm not getting paid to say that I love it, so don't worry about that. I love the Calvin Klein Reveal fragrance because it's so different from all the other fragrances that are out on the market. Now that I've smelled this, everything else kind of smells the same. And even the Tory Burch perfume that I was sort of coveting over the last year, basically since it came out, when I first smelled it, I thought it was amazing. When I received it recently as a Sephora perk and I put it on, I didn't like it as much. And I think it's because... I just got used to smelling different. I didn't want to smell fruity and I didn't want to smell floral. So the Reveal scent is more of a peppery scent, or it has notes of pepper in it. If you watch my late August favorite, I actually talk a little bit more about the perfume itself. So if you're looking for something different, Reveal is definitely a good way to go. It's sensual, it's peppery, it's just, it's different. It's not fruity or floral, it's not really musky, but it just, it doesn't... It's just there's nothing else like it, so this has definitely been my scent of choice for the year.
So that's about it for my 2014 favorites. Thank you so much for watching this whole thing. And I think that's about it. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And you can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Vlog Lovin'. And I will see you next time. Bye!